Hej, pytanie na dziś. Czekaj o życie tego pana. I am David Mullock. Okej, okay, chyba nie. W takim razie podpowiedź. A czy kojarzycie wzorowanego na nim ser Mulika, bohatera zamku Heroes 3? I am producer of Heroes of My Magic 3, as well as Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, Disney's DuckTales, I have the mouth and I'm a scream and the prisoner. Tak się składa, że mamy dziś zaszczyt gościć dość nietypowego gościa. Bezzwłocznie więc przejdźmy do tematu pracy nad Heroesami 3, do kontrowersji wokół czwórki i tego, co działo się z Marką dalej. Ale wpierw właśnie, dlaczego David w ogóle został postacią w grze? I had come back from vacation and my members of my team said they had a surprise for me and we were working at, at, at the time on an expansion to Heroes of My Magic 3. So they, they called me over to a screen and they showed me a character called Sir Mullock. And it was a picture of me that had been taken from actually from Might and Magic 7, which is the role-playing game that New World Computing was developing alongside of the heroes. And they named the character after me, Sir Mullock, and gave gave him a, a kind of a silly description and along with plus two speed as is uh, it was it was meant to be funny, and I looked at it, I laughed, and I said, okay, you can put it into the game. Dobra, koniec żartów, przechodzimy do trudnych pytań. Czy Sokoli Wzrok, umiejętność z gry, do której wielu fanów twierdzi, że to jedno wielkie nieporozumienie, jest zdaniem naszego gościa dobra? In my opinion, uh, we, we used Eagle Eye skill, we took it over from Heroes of Might and Magic 2. We at the time thought it was good. I've since heard from a lot of people who say that they think Eagle Eye is not good. So there, there's, there's some differences opinion about that. No dobra, o gustach się dyskutuje, ale może się jeszcze polubimy. Ulubione miasto w grze. Well, from Heroes of Might Magic 3, I think my favorite town is the Tower Town. Mostly because I like the, I like the um, uh, background for it. The mountains and the snow, it's always been one of my favorite environments. So I like a lot of the creatures in it. It may not be the most powerful town, but aesthetically, I think it's, it's certainly one of my favorite towns. No i to jest dobra odpowiedź, a nie jakieś nekropolis czy inny bastion. W swojej długiej karierze David pracował nad wieloma różnymi grami z różnych gatunków, ale czy w tym wszystkim jest jakaś jedna ulubiona, taka jedna, nad którą pracowało się najlepiej? Jeśli tak, to dlaczego? My favorite experience developing uh, a game has been Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Couple reasons. One, the team was just great. We worked together fine, hardly any disagreements. Enjoyed each other's company and I think that that showed in the final project. Also, it's the only game I ever made that I actually enjoyed playing after I was done with it. Because usually the problem is that when you're making a game, most of the time it's not fun to play. It's it's not complete, it's broken, it's not polished. It's not it doesn't get fun until the very end. But by then I I played it so many times I'm just I'm just sick of it. Except for Heroes of My Magic 3. There's something about that game that's so engaging that I, I continue to play it. Jak wiemy, nie ma gier idealnych i na pewno Heroes 3 z całą swoją kultowością też taką grą idealną nie jest. W takim razie, czy jest jakiś jeden element, z którego twórca jest najbardziej dumny i wręcz przeciwnie, czy jest coś, czego po latach żałuje, co chciałby zmienić, gdyby mógł się, nie wiem, cofnąć w czasie czy coś? Well, I'm, I'm proud of the entire game of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. The art, the gameplay, the story. The, uh, the uh, music, great music in that game. Everything comes together and creates a, a, a really fulfilling experience. So I guess if, if anything that I'm most proud of, it's, it's the harmonious nature of all the elements together. If there's anything I could change, well, not, not in the main game, but we were working on an expansion called The Forge Town. And this was based upon a storyline from our sister product in, in, in the Might and Magic role-playing game series. They had just come up with, a, in their latest version, revelation that there was a cosmic forge in the center of the, of the planet and uh, that was able to produce all these science, science fiction artifacts. Because uh, the world of Might and Magic has always been a combination of fantasy and science fiction. Well, since we were following their storyline, we decided to incorporate that forge into uh, into an expansion for Might and Magic uh, 3. And we thought, it's an expansion, good time to introduce the science fiction elements. So we had we had dwarves with ray guns and minotaurs with jetpacks and nagas with tank treads. And uh, unfortunately, 
As we were doing the initial sketches for it, a member of our marketing department came up to me and said, do you have anything we can show off to the fans to just keep them interested? So I walked into the, uh, the concept illustrator's office, just grabbed a sheet of paper and said, here, pick something from here to show them. I shouldn't have done that. And that's my biggest regret because some of the uh, pictures that were taken, they were a little bit too revealing in terms of uh, the female characters. Some were a little scantily dressed. Uh, I think the Naga was, and wouldn't have been what the final product looked like. But when it got when 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 it got released, a lot of the fans complained that the art was too sexual in its nature. Also, I think our fans in general weren't prepared for the science fiction elements. So uh, as a result, a lot of our fans complained. In fact, uh, one of our, our most loyal websites, fan websites, they threatened to launch a boycott against the game. So. Uh, I, I would have fought it, but 3DO, our pairing company, a couple of days after the boycott was announced, said, pull the forge down, come up with something else. And I think if I had to do anything different, yeah, I would have been more careful about what art I gave to our marketing department. No właśnie, to nieszczęsne Forge i mroczny rozdział legendy Heroes 3. Pomijając ten niesławny mix nagi i czołgu, z tamtych lat ostał się też screen przedstawiający w ogóle ten zamek i niektóre jednostki, co bardzo nie spodobało się niektórym fanom. Chociaż w sumie, jak ktoś już idzie dalej niż bojkot w kierunku pogróżek, to na miano fana nie zasługuje. Jak było w przypadku Grega Fultona. Greg Fulton was our lead designer. After there was backlash on the Forge Town, he, uh, he decided to leave. He had received uh, some death threats from some of the fans, and I think he was disappointed that our management didn't take that very seriously. But there may have been, may have been some other reasons. Uh, as well. That may have just been the sort of the straw that broke the camel's back from just deciding to leave. But he didn't just leave the company, he left, he left the game industry entirely after that. Porównując dziś Heroes 2 i 3, aż trudno uwierzyć, że to gry z tej samej serii. Wiadomo, jest pewien wspólny mianownik, widać ewolucję pewnych koncepcji i pomysłów, ale jednak różnice między tym a tym są dość drastyczne. Co w takim razie popchnęło twórców w tym kierunku? Co popchnęło ich do tak dużych zmian? So we, we expanded it great. We, we basically built upon what Heroes 2 did and added to it. We took an entire new look to the artwork. Whereas Heroes 2, the artwork was sort of very fanciful and kind of cartoony. We decided to go with a much more grittier style. Uh, what I called extreme fantasy. Because at the time, extreme sports were very popular. So I thought that just to do something new for, for, for the next version of Heroes, that we should take the artwork in a new direction. Uh, so something that was a little bit darker and grittier and, and more appropriate for a game about warfare. The thing that most influenced us in terms of the artwork was probably uh, Warhammer. No proszę, Młotek zainspirował Heroesy. Nawet to miejsca nie widzę. Okej, okay, to skoro mówimy o zmianach, to muszę poruszyć pewien trudny temat. Co skłoniło twórców do zmian i do ogólnie kierunku Heroes 4? Czwórki, która była dość kontrowersyjna i wielu fanom nie przypadła do gustu. Czy po tak wielkim sukcesie sprzedażowym i wizerunkowym, jakim była trójka, nie lepiej było po prostu dać nam więcej tego samego? Takie Heroes 3, tylko że 2.0? Well, with, for Heroes 3, we, we made two expansions and we also created a, a series of products uh, called uh, Heroes Chronicles. There were a collection of campaigns. So just adding, just making another expansion wouldn't have justified it being a Heroes 4. Problem is when doing any sequel, it's trying to balance what's new enough to justify people wanting to buy it while still retaining enough of the old version that it still has that familiarity, familiarity what made it popular in the first place. So in deciding what to do with Heroes 4, We decided we couldn't add any more towns to it. Uh, we thought that eight was the limit. If we increased it to 10 or 12, we were worried it, it would just become too unwieldy and too difficult to balance. So we actually scaled back a little bit, and then what we decided is to add some new gameplay elements. Probably the main feature was this time having heroes actually participate in the battlefield. And that was my idea, uh, basically because the game was called, the series was called Heroes of Might and Magic not generals of might and magic. So I, I thought if they're real heroes, they should be out there actually leading their armies. In hindsight, maybe maybe not the, the, the greatest change to make, but uh, it, it, was, it was just trying to find something different to do. And then we had, uh, we had a greater variety of heroes classes, 
technically, oh, for Heroes 4, we did decide to rewrite all the engine code. So we did start the programming from scratch on that one. Tutaj w ogóle warto dodać, że czwórka miała dość nietypowy cykl produkcyjny, ponieważ firma 3D ochyliła się ku upadkowi z czwórki, wycięto pewne elementy, no i zgaduję, że presja od wydawcy, jak i w ogóle problemy finansowe odcisnęły swoje piętno na samej grze. Ale co ja się będę rozgadywał? Uderzmy z tematem do źródła. Well, they... 3DO was going through financial difficulties as we were working on uh, on Heroes of Might and Magic 4. So we were under great pressure to publish by a particular date because they were really relying on income from our game to keep the rest of the company going. 3DO had a lot of other franchises going on, uh, but the, I think that they were counting on Heroes to be its its savior. So yeah, there were was a lot of pressure on us. Unfortunately. We, uh, we were not staffed properly through most of our project in terms of programmers. We were working with two programmers up until about the very end because uh, New World Computing was really set up to be working on two franchises at once. We started work on a third franchise at the time and that drew away a lot of our programming staff. So didn't get, uh, lost our, our multiplayer programmer, lost a couple of our other programmers that have worked on Heroes 3. So uh, it was just two programmers, working on it up until uh, uh, close to the deadline when we were supposed to finish and uh, when they asked me if we'd, we'd make the deadline I said no we don't have enough programmers then suddenly that got their attention and there was a mad rush to bring hire on new programmers to our team so we we brought in a whole bunch of, of, of new programmers at the very last minute to finish it up and I think that uh, that mad rush on the end had some impact on on the quality of the game. I tak powoli kończy się legenda tych starych heroesów, a po upadku 3DO marka poszła pod młotek i trafia do Ubisoftu, który sprawuje nad nią pieczę do dziś. Fani zdają się krzyczeć, dajcie nam wreszcie pełnoprawny remake trójki, mamy dość tych sequeli i prób wymyślania koło na nowo, choć fakt, te nowe heroesy mają też pewnych swoich fanów. Wracając, David mówi, że kochał pracować nad trójką, że jest dumny z gry, że miał świetny zespół, w takim razie, jakie to uczucie, gdy twoje dzieło zostaje sprzedane za dziś śmiesznie małą kwotę 1,3 miliona dolarów? I mówię tutaj nie tylko o Heroesach, ale o całej marce Might and Magic. It was tough watching the main company sink lower and lower in terms of their, their financial stability. And in fact, the uh, right after Heroes of Might and Magic 4 shipped, most, most of us in New World were laid off and I was one of them. So I had left the company before the Heroes franchise was sold to Ubisoft. I had attended E3, the Ele Electronic Entertainment Expo, about a year after I'd been laid off, and I went to the Ubisoft booth, and they were showing off their plans for Heroes of Mind Magic 5. So I went there because I was interested, but as I heard them describing it, it's sort of like listening to uh, somebody else raise your children, and uh, I, I decided, I. I I need to divorce myself completely from the situation. So I, uh, I, I never played Heroes of Might and Magic 5 and I really didn't pay much attention to what else they were doing in the Hero series. Rzecz jasna, nie był to koniec kariery Davida Molika w game devie, bo ten wyprodukował potem wiele innych produkcji. Między innymi Activision wysłało go do ratowania Vampire the Masquerade. Ale na dziś wystarczy nam gorzkich historii o upadłych studiach od świetnych gier. Jako, że David od lat nie pracuje w game devie, to czy jeszcze w ogóle gra? Jeśli tak, to w co? Right now, uh, last game I played were a lot of games made by my students. I, I teach uh, game design at the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. And one of the classes I teach is our capstone project, which is the final project made by groups of our students before they graduate. And we, uh, well, one of our students made a, a great game called Neo Versailles that takes place inside the Palace of Versailles in France. And, uh, and in it, you're chased by a demon. And I, I have to say, I, I've been so busy with that for the past, uh, past uh, spring that uh, I haven't had time to play any of the other games. I'm, I'm really focused on what my students are doing right now. Nie wiem jak dla was, ale dla mnie ta historia jest bardzo wholesome, że ktoś, kto odpowiada za wiele no, legendarnych, kultowych gier z naszego dzieciństwa, z czasem przeszedł na drugi plan, wycofał się z robienia gier, ale no nie do końca, bo mentoruje teraz kolejnemu pokoleniu twórców gier. No chyba, że to tylko ja i na siłę doszukuję się tutaj analogii do pewnej serii filmów bokserskich. W takim razie, skoro mamy za sobą te trudne tematy jak kontrowersje i 
finanse, to skończmy w bardziej pozytywnym tonie. Czy są jakieś rady, które David dałby młodym twórcom gier? Co na przykład ja bym musiał zrobić, gdybym chciał jutro rzucić TV gry i zacząć robić gierki? I'll tell you, it's important to get an education. Unless you're an indie developer and working on small projects where you're doing all yourself, game industry is very specialized. And uh, the programming is specialized. Art is specialized. Uh, nobody's looking for generalists. They want the, somebody who's, you know, can, they're, they're good at doing uh, textures that use for environmental objects that are of this particular look. You know, that it gets into that level of detail. Um, so if you're wanting to get in the game industry, think about very specifically what you want to do. Very few people develop games all by themselves. Uh, it's not like when I started off uh, in the game industry. What you, you need to do is figure, I'd say, number one, focus, uh, decide whether you want to focus on art or programming. Those are the two main disciplines. Don't go into it thinking you're going to start off as a, as a designer. Des game design is not an entry level position, not, not, at least not for AAA companies. Most people either start off as a programmer or start off as an artist, and then later on, when they have the opportunity, go into design. So think more closely about which discipline you prefer, and then uh, either get a good education, if, either through school, if, that's, if school is what works best for you, or you can do it on your own, but you still have to educate yourself and you still have to stay on top of things uh, because the game industry changes rapidly. Technologies change, uh, the market changes, uh, business models change, so you're, you have to be constantly educating yourself anyway. I tym miłym akcentem dziękuję Wam bardzo za uwagę, dziękuję naszemu gościu za wywiad i pamiętajcie dzieci, edukacja, a nie jakieś gry wideo i narkotyki. Na razie. <muzyka>